So this unit here is all going. What I'm planning to do is fix or upgrade the cooling solution. To do that, what I'm going to do is um, unscrew this power MOSFET, unsolder it. Now this is a, um, a appears to be a dual layer PCB, um, which is going to be a bit of a pain because I haven't really worked on too many dual layer PCBs. But it looks like it's got solder at the top and the bottom. Um, so it's got tracks that go to different places, so I'm going to have to be a bit careful. But this unit's going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew this heatsink and only connect up the um, the power of the diode here to the heatsink. Have the fan connected so that it cools the inductor because the inductor gets hot when the um, when you're drawing um, a few amps for uh, definitely for a long period of time. So what I'll do is I'll put the heatsink back in place again so that it's cooling the top area of the um, board inductor and the, this heatsink. And what I'll do is I'll move the power uh, MOSFET to underneath the board on this position so it'll sit something like this and then I can bolt a heatsink here uh, very much like the exact design that this unit here has got where you can see that the two power MOSFETs here are bolted to the bottom of the um, the board and to the heatsink so that's a much better solution and it means I can have a big heatsink here um, and it'll keep this nice and cool in which case I'm not going to hopefully come up with the same problem and end up blowing it up so in theory, that's what I'm going to do. I've got a couple of heatsinks to play with. I've got this heatsink here, which is an old CPU heatsink off an old computer. Um, it's an aluminium one. It's fairly light, but it does come with a fan. The size of it is, you know, roughly um, under half the size of, or just sorry, just over half the size of the PCB. Um, so it's it's quite a, a, a large size compared to what the existing one is and it will probably do the, the job. I've also, also, oops that's the one I'm going to be replacing. I've also got this other heatsink here that's a pure copper heatsink so it's really heavy. Um, it's also got its fan assembly there. Um, maybe I'll use this one here as well. Um, so my hope is to get both of these units um, with the new heat sinks on and um, obviously this other unit I'll fix with the MOSFET that will hopefully arrive in the next few weeks but first thing to do is get this thing up and running and um, how I'm going to do that is I've got um, what's the best way to show you underneath what I'll do is I'll put a piece of perspex that I've got so I've got perspex on the ground here I've drawn out the 100 by 100 slots of um, the PCB that's the same size as the, the current PCB so I'll cut two of these one for each of those 900 watt units the um, the perspex will sit here the heatsink will bolt to the back of the perspex and then the perspex will screw onto these um, these uh, screws here and what I'll do then is I'll attach that to there and with any luck um, it'll work. So that's a very simple version of that but what I'll do is I'll cut the um, the perspex out and we'll see how that looks and see if it's going to work. Right so I've unscrewed the heatsink this will go back on again later and it'll be connected just to the um, the diode there and we're going to take the uh, unsolder the power MOSFET and solder it in the back. Right, so with some soldering, or some mic soldering, we've managed to get that swapped around to the back there. Um, it is an absolute pain in the butt to get that out um, and to re-solder it. So I wouldn't recommend doing this daily, but um, that appears to work. I plugged it back in and it does actually function. So that's a good start. So now we'll kind of move on to the next part. Right, so I went up the road, and rather than using these other two heat sinks here, I decided to um, go all out and I got one of these heat sinks. So this is a ridiculous cost in New Zealand, this was um, $24, um, but it's a very heavy heat sink and when you compare that to this little piece of crap, there is quite a lot of difference. So um, now that it's been removed, I'll put that back onto here, however that goes. And then this, I've changed a couple of ideas, but this with that uh, MOSFET there will attach to the side of it so it'll sit something like this. 
um, which looks pretty awesome. So we'll see how that goes. Right, so what I've done is I've put my piece of perspex on there. So I've pretty much cut two lips out of it, which I'm sure, sure you'll be able to see. One to be able to slide over the, um, the fuse part that kind of comes up way too high. But rather than kind of cutting that off or grinding it off, I thought I'd just cut a slit in it um, so that it sits in there quite nicely. And it just slots under the, um, the bottom lip of the MOSFET there. So it's, um, it's in there quite nicely. It's not cut exactly to size, but it's, um, it's pretty damn close. Now this um, is a bit kind of crusty around the edges. Um, it doesn't matter because you're never going to see it. So it's only there to just protect the, um, the circuit board and to stop any shorts against the, um, the heatsink. So, uh, and obviously to hold the heatsink in place. So that's how that's looking. And I'll, um, I'll move on to the next stage. Right, so I've attached it all. Um, now it's not my best work, but it's kind of a bit of a test to check that it's going to work. What I ended up having to do is um, bolt a couple of, or screw in a couple of pieces of wood um, that I had lying around to give it some stability because um, if I come across, if I spin this around, and I can get down here, um, because the whole thing's kind of connected to that um, power MOSFET there, the, it needed to be quite sturdy, um, otherwise the contacts at the top of that MOSFET would break off. So I had to kind of come up with a, a good solution. At the start, what I decided to do uh, was attach the perspex to the top of the um, heatsink. But the issue with that was, was there's really no simple way to do that um, with the stuff that I had today. So I kind of had to improvise, um, hence the couple of pieces of wood that I had to attach it to. So it's now a nice sturdy block um, and it's all attached and it powers up and it appears to work, which is a good start. Um, but it's obviously got one massive heatsink on it now. So with any luck, um, it should run nice and cold, but I'll have to plug it in and test it. I only did a very quick test just to see um, that it fires up and there's, it's putting out um, some voltage, which is what it's doing. Um, but yeah, it's gone from a small little heatsink to one hell of a massive heatsink. So we're going to have to just see how it goes and um, see if it makes a difference and see if this big heatsink um, heats up. So I'll do a video um, later on, but this is just kind of a, a quick video just to finish this part. Um, and um, it'll be much obviously better to use the 900 watt one than using the 600 watt to try and charge um, the power wall. But either way, um, big modification and um, so far it's working. So thanks for watching guys.